Armored Republic just came out with the toughest armor ever, the A4. It is a titanium steel alloy that uses titanium for its extreme hardness and steel for its extreme durability. But in this video, we're gonna see exactly how strong it is and why that's important for the free man. In a second, we're gonna get into a field test to show you exactly what the A4 is capable of. But before we get into that, we wanna talk about the theory of why A4 is the toughest armor ever. And that comes into two variables. One is stopping power and second is durability. Let's talk about stopping power. There are two kinds of bullets that penetrate armor most effectively, very fast rounds and rounds with a very high kinetic energy. And so when we built the A4, we wanted to make sure that it stopped both of these types of threats easily. This is M193. It is a 5.56, 55 grain, full metal jacket round. It is often tested at 3,250 feet per second, which means that it often is able to cut through plates like a knife if they're not built to stop it. So we needed to take this into account. Additionally, we have the M80 A1, which is the big brother to M80 Ball, a very common 308 round. The difference is that not only does it have all of that mass of the M80 Ball, but also it has an enhanced steel penetrator, which makes it even harder to stop. Ceramic plates are often capable of stopping M80 A1, but they struggle with that energy transfer from the fact that there's so much mass going into this penetrating the armor. So when the A4 is built, we wanted to make sure that it had the capability of stopping fast rounds and high kinetic energy rounds. But we also needed to make sure it was durable, which means that it can take round after round, it can take abuse, you can throw the vest around and then put it on, and you know it will still perform consistently, which is exactly what the steel titanium alloy is capable of doing. Now let's get into the field test. Now, we've already confirmed via independent testing with energetic test labs that this plate is capable of stopping the rounds that we advertise M80 A1 and M193. However, we wanna show you on video so as to illustrate two things. One is that it has that stopping power, including after many hits, and then additionally, that the back face deformation means you will not have a heavy energy transfer into your body, which is really important. It is great to stop the bullet, that's the top priority, but if it transfers all the energy into your body because the back balloons and hits your body, then that's going to be harmful still. So we wanna make sure that those two things are addressed. One other thing that we want to test in this video is the fragmentation effect, which obviously is something that you hear a lot about on Reddit, for instance. And people think that it's going to be very similar to that of a steel target out on the range, where it's just going to explode in all directions. But that's not the case for two reasons. One is the frag lock, which even in base coat helps to redirect that fragmentation away from you. And then additionally, wearing a plate carrier, it's going to be very different than if you just have a raw piece of steel. So let's go ahead and take a look. All right, let's check it out. Okay, so we've got our first shot on target. You can see it's this hit right here. And as you can clearly see, there is no penetration. Let's take a look at the back. As you can see here, there's basically zero back face deformation, which means that this plate is not getting deformed by the round, it's staying steady. So that's one hit here, one hit here. Now what I'd like to do is try and get a hit somewhere around there, so that you can see the full scope of multi-hit capability of the round. The plate, that is. Mm -hmm. I also want to make a quick note about the fragmentation pattern. As you can see, this is a base coat. This is the minimal level of fragmentation protection we offer, and you can see it's very effective at its job because it tore through these fibers here and it went straight out, but it did not spread across the plate carrier, which means, imagine you get hit here you're gonna see the same thing. And that's exactly what the goal is, to hit it somewhere near the center so as to illustrate that. But again, this is a totally overblown issue in the industry right now, this fragmentation concern. And ultimately, it's also not something that's gonna be unique to steel. If you've got a ceramic plate, it's gonna hit that hard surface, the bullet is gonna have fragments. And so the base coat, the buildup coat, the carrier, those things exist so as to mitigate that fragmentation. I got one more round of M80A1 that I want to put in this target, hopefully a little bit higher than the last shot, so that we can see something in the middle. Mission accomplished, let's check it out. One, two, three. Again, noting that this was actually from a prior video shoot that we did for the vertical format Instagram Reels. Three hits, M80A1, very little back face deformation. You can see, this plate is really built pretty strong. 
Another note really quickly here is you can see the fragmentation pattern is the same as it was. There's a circle here, circle here, dissipating outward. Now, this is really interesting to note. This is a bare plate carrier. A lot of people try and test armor with no plate carrier at all, and that's pretty silly. This is a plate carrier. It's got nothing on it. If you've got mag pouches and stuff like that, that's gonna further contain the fragmentation. And again, it'll just be a non-issue. Now we're switching to 5.56, and I wanna make a quick note. Switching from an AR-10 to an AR-15, the weight difference is so insane. The ability to move this around nimbly is so crazy. If anyone advocates for a battle rifle setup as opposed to a carbine for warfare, uh, they're crazy. That's all. All right, we're shooting some lightweight 5.56223 style ammo here. One quick note is this is gonna be a way weaker test out here on the field just because my barrel is not long enough to mimic those speeds that we're gonna get from the energetic test lab reports, which you can see on the site, but we'll just shoot it to make a point. Uh, the carrier was a prototype, and one of the main failures of it was it did not have a long enough plate pocket flap. So I guess let's check it out. Real quick, I, I just gotta show this. Um, you can see here the difference between M80A1 versus little 55 grain bullets. It's crazy, it's silly how much impact there is from these in comparison to this. But at the same time, of course, it's way easier to carry a bunch of this around and to shoot it. And obviously the plate did great. Fragmentation is in the exact same pattern as before. You don't see it even after multiple hits going like this and starting to you know, blow up his neck or something like that. You can see the tags on the carrier for notes to make about the changes. One of which was, don't make it fall out the bottom. Make sure that your plate carrier is built professionally by people who know what they're doing. A lot of people, when they see armor testing, they go, well, sure, but you're going to have all of your lens exploded and everything in your body is going to be dysfunctional because of the impact of that round. Now, the lack of back face deformation actually illustrates that that's not very much the case, but we wanted to have a little bit of an illustration by taping this egg carton here, used egg carton. Sadly, there's no fresh eggs in here because who can afford that in this economy? And I'm gonna try and tape this all around this dude so that that will be like a uh, vulnerable portion of his body. We'll see if it gets pulverized by the impact of the rounds. So now we've got a simulated area of vulnerability behind this plate to see, okay, if you get hit, what is the energy transfer into your body going to look like? Because a lot of people say that steel plates have zero energy transfer mitigation and that the energy goes right through, in which case we'll see this little like pinholes, I suppose, of energy transfer into the egg carton. I don't think that the people who say this actually understand how physics works, but we're gonna test it. All right, I've got one more round of M80A1 in here, so let's go ahead and see what the energy transfer looks like. Let's try a few more. Real quick, for those of you concerned with fragmentation, we've got a build up in here, and you could see they've got two hits. I couldn't even tell that I had hit it because the build up had captured that fragmentation, which is absolutely crazy. You consider it very simple upgrade to your armor. You just turn it into a non-issue. It's simple as that. Let's take a look at the carton. From what I can see, it didn't even bust the tape. I would imagine if there was a ton of energy transfer, this tape, something would be damaged here. I get the feeling you'd be fine. You'd be absolutely okay. I need to sharpen my knife. Oops, fertilizer. See, it's hard to even tell, like none of these little, none of these little pyramids or whatever are like super damaged. I think it would be a really minor issue. Trauma pads are still useful though. They make it a lot more comfortable and they do mitigate the back base deformation if there is any, no matter what plate you're using. But you can see it's not, there's this common myth that steel is gonna absolutely destroy your body if you get hit. 
In reality, that energy is getting dissipated on the surface at the impact, as opposed to transferring into your body. That's why it's so good not to have high back face deformation. So we've seen the field testing and we can see that the A4 is very strong. But let's talk about the designation. Armored Republic is calling this plate level three plus plus, which is not official, you could say. Level three is the only official designation as far as level three, three plus and plus plus are concerned. And that means that it is able to stop six rounds of M80 ball per the NIJ 010106 standard. That is level three. And then people started calling their plates level three plus, including Armored Republic to refer to its capability of stopping things like M193 or M855. Now, we could have just called the A4 level three plus because anything beyond level three, you could say is technically included there, but we thought it didn't get the idea across of just how strong this plate is. Hence the second plus to address the fact that it is capable of stopping not M80 ball, but M80 A1, which is significantly stronger. In effect, the A4 is as close as you can get to a level four rating without being level four. Level four refers to the ability to stop M2 AP, an armor piercing 30-06 round designated as black tip. Now, should we make a level four steel plate? The problem is it would have to be exceptionally heavy, exceptionally thick in order to stop M2 AP, and that is a very rare round. This plate will be able to stop more common versions of 30-06, but M2 AP, it's definitely a bit of a unicorn, you could say. Level three plus plus, we made this designation so as to indicate it's gonna stop not just the common rounds, but also all of those really rare rounds, but not necessarily every single round you could possibly face. The final point of analysis I wanna cover is why is it important to have higher stopping power? Because as we noted before, M80 ball is a lot more common than M80 A1. Well, this is something that actually encapsulates what I think is very important to a free man, a prepared citizen, which is that we have many enemies. We have various disaster situations that we have to prepare for, including ones that will require conflict and protecting our families. And our enemy is unknown. We do not know what people might have out there. And so having a stronger plate is a form of insurance against all sorts of different threats. Now, when you take into account how lab testing is normally done, it's normally done in a worst case scenario kind of style. So it's shot dead on at a very close range. And that's all very good. All plates are tested like that. But then when you take the A4 plate and the fact that it's got elevated velocities of enhanced penetrating rounds, those things encapsulate such a wider variety of possible threats you could face that it makes you that much more confident when you're entering into combat that your plates will be there to protect you. Finally, gentlemen, I'm not sure if you understood quite how powerful this plate is. So in honor of old tradition of how we test Armored Republic plates, we're gonna mag dump into it. Good, good. I can reload. So fancy. What are the three things that composite plates really struggle with? Lots of rounds, rounds close together, and back base deformation. Let's take a look at the A4. We got lots of rounds. Absolutely no issue. M80A1, M80A1, M80A1 tons of 556223 style ammo and you can see even some really close rounds rounds even stacking and there's absolutely no issue on the back you can't even tell it was hit such little back face deformation what you're gonna do a4 is just too strong 